Well, welcome back, folks. Today we're going to do a little walkabout review of the completed restoration project, the TS-185, that I did, uh, well, I started on about five, five and a half years ago and completed it about four years ago exactly. That would be spring, early summer of 2016. Uh, it's been requested by one of my followers uh, fish 819 since I didn't do a final review that I would do that so that's what this is for to uh, allow folks to see the finished project I did do a couple of videos uh, on bits and pieces of this project uh, including the first start which is in February of 2016 and since I am shooting this outside, by the way, you might have a little wind noise. I wanted to shoot it in the sunlight rather than in the darker workshop. I thought the sunlight, the natural sunlight, would feature it a little bit better. So if you hear a little wind noise from time to time, you'll have to forgive me. Uh, back to the project. Uh, I was looking for a, specifically a 1973, Suzuki TS-185, not because I owned one uh, years ago, I never I never did, not until I bought this one, but I always liked these bikes, and I, I restore what I like and what I'm interested in, and back when I was a kid, these were very popular, and I always liked the look of them, and in fact, for my money, the 73, 1973 model Suzuki Enduros are some of the best looking motorcycles of their era. In any event, the, the yellow of this bike uh, caught my eye back in the day. You could get this actually in two colors. You could get it in blue, kind of a medium blue, and then this yellow. I like the yellow. So I started looking for one back uh, six or seven years ago, and I actually did find a pair of them owned by the same person. I uh, found them on Craigslist, the commercial uh, online uh, for sale and other, uh, mostly probably familiar with Craigslist, but you need to do for sale and jobs and all that kind of thing. Uh, he had bought a 71, which was a green version of this. I think that was the first model year, 1971. And then he had this 73, and his intention was to make one good bike out of them. And as so many of the, these things go, he never got done with it. So he put them on Craigslist as a pair. The green one was in, intended as a parts bike, which is what I use it for. However, one of the things that I discovered is that um, quite a few of the parts actually don't uh, fit between the two different models. There are there are some parts, of course, that do, but particularly the bodywork uh, is a little bit different between the two, and there's other nuances. Nonetheless, I did use some of the parts on the 71 for this project. And eventually I sold the 71 off as a parts bike to someone else. That's long gone. And I was left with this finished project. I will include here uh, next a photo of this bike as I received it before I started the restoration. This bike actually did run when I got it. It didn't run very good, but it, I did get it started and uh, just to see if it ran. But ultimately, I did completely tear the bike apart, as I usually do, right down to every last nut and bolt. Went completely through the motor, new pistons, rings, bearings, went through the transmission, clutch springs, clutch plates. Uh, I did not paint this bike. I had it painted professionally. And my painter has done other work for me, and he did a really nice job on it. Uh, the biggest problem, believe it or not, I had on this project was getting parts, which I didn't think was going to be an issue. Uh, at least it seemed to be for me. I did eventually get everything, as you can see, but uh, I took a little digging, more so than what I was used to on some of my other projects I had worked on up to this point when I started on uh, the Suzuki. So let's move in a little bit closer and we'll do a little bit of a walkabout up close and, and I'll discuss the various things that um, I had to work on. So I'm just going to do a little bit of a walk around here. This is kind of an up close. The sun is over my right shoulder. 
here. This bike, of course, does run. I have ridden it. You can see I've got a period correct license plate there. It is not registered. That was a brand new plate, by the way. Never had been issued. Everything on this motorcycle was rebuilt, replated, repainted. The tank, by the way, when I got the bike, which you probably have seen now in the photo, was not the original tank for this bike. I think the tank was off a TS-125, not the 185. That just, uh, that's just a uh, suspicion on my part. I really don't know. All the chrome was redone. The wheels are original. The exhaust system is original. I had to have the exhaust system welded, TIG welded. I don't, I can MIG weld. I have a stick welder and a MIG welder, but I do not have a TIG welder. And I was a little concerned with the very thin metal of that exhaust system. So I took it up to a town fairly close to me and I had it TIG welded because it had some fatigue cracks. You will notice on that little Suzuki badge right there, if you look real close, that was an aftermarket replacement. Some of the paint has started to flake off, I just noticed today. So I'm going to have to repaint that lettering. The meters are original. I sent them off to a Suzuki meter expert. Uh, I think he's out of the Caribbean, to be honest with you, the Barbados or someplace like that, and they were gone for probably four or five weeks. But he completely rebuilt them. They do work. And you can see, I think I've got about half a mile on the bike. That's all I've ridden it, just to test it and make sure it works. I don't ride my complete restorations. I put too much time and money, and I live on a gravel road and have a gravel driveway. So I will carefully test my projects out, but I don't ride them. They're simply for show. The meter guy that rebuilt my meters said that the lenses on those are plastic, I believe, and they tend to haze and crack. And he actually does, if necessary, he will put new faces on them. On mine, he didn't. He asked me if I wanted new phases. They do have a very minor hazing, if you look at them in just the right angle. But they really look good. Let's look inside the gas tank. It has been lined. I think as you can see there, though it's never had fuel in it, I ran it only on the auxiliary fuel tank that I have. There's the under seat. There is no battery in it right now. I do have a battery for it, but I don't leave batteries in my restorations. There is a transmission oil and there's two-stroke oil in the, in the tank. But uh, I pull the batteries out and keep them just maintained. I did paint the exhaust system myself, by the way. And it might on the video look like there's a chip in the paint on the muffler, but there's not. It's just a ref light reflection. I do have an original period correct 1973 user's manual right there, owner's manual. And it does have a full toolkit. And though I'm not going to pull it out, 
uh, all the tools in there are, have been restored and replated, and that is the contents is exact as was used originally on this model. The seat I did recover myself. Um, the powder coating, most of the larger powder coating was done professionally because I can't powder coat a frame, but uh, the other, many of the other parts I did myself, including this, if I recall correctly anyway, this seat pan. And it is original to the bike, believe it or not. All the lights, horn, brake light, headlight, high-low beam, works. We'll comment on that rear fender there that sticks out straight. You can see how it comes out straight. If you read period uh, magazine reviews of the Suzuki Enduros, and most of them did use that design, uh, it was quite controversial. It seems to be either a love it or hate it kind of design. I personally like it. I think it's quite appealing. And uh, it's a little different, but I like it nonetheless. Here's the left side view of the bike. That's the oil tank right there for the two stroke injection oil. The bike is oil tight, I don't have any problems with leaks. I have one other thing related to this bike I'll show you inside of the shop. And you're looking at a period correct poster that I had made. I have posters made for all my uh, restorations. Painting along the wall here. There's the SL70 and off to the far left you see the G5 Kawasaki not very well. But what I do is I go out and find period correct advertising, like you see here. This is a period ad. Then I have it blown up and printed on that's vinyl, vinyl sheet. And then I put it on the wall behind, above and behind where I typically would uh, store my bikes. One uh, little tip for you if you want to come up with an inexpensive means to cover your projects. What I like to use is 100% cotton fitted bed sheets. And when I say fitted, I mean the kind of sheet that has the elastic around the bottom edge. You can buy them separate from uh, sheet sets. You know, it has a fit, the top sheet, the flat sheet, and then a fitted sheet. I buy 100% cotton fitted sheets, you can buy them in single, twin, queen, or king size. I buy normally the full size. For like 10, 10 US dollars, you can get a cotton sheet, and what that elastic allows it to do is kind of pull in around the bottom of the bike. There are no scratch if you get cotton. They're inexpensive. You can throw them in a washer if you want or need to. And um, I just Buy, you know, go up to Walmart or wherever and you know buy and you can buy them individually. And they were great for bike covers. Uh, and they're easy to, to handle, easy to clean, readily available. I don't bother with fitted covers, bike covers anymore. I just, not for my restorations. I just use fitted sheets. Well, that's going to be it for this project today, folks. Or this review, rather. Any issues, thoughts, questions, drop me a note. Otherwise, as usual, thanks for watching.